and grow YouTube show. I think we have to start with boho, or I guess that's short for bohemian, right? Love it. That's right. So I, I have to say shout out to Justina Blankenly of the Jungalo. I'm absolutely obsessed with her and everything she does. I feel like the Jungalo is kind of its own thing now, but it's definitely, it's born of that kind of boho vibe. And I just feel like plants are so integral to the style. So can you just talk about kind of the high level of what the style actually means? Definitely. Well, bohemian you know, when we're talking about visual references would mm. be things that do not feel matchy matchy at all. Perhaps they even came from different countries, world travels. A lot of them need to feel either hand hewn, like, you know, metals that were hammered or silks mm. that are raw or, um, you know, macrame that's loomed, something that feels like not only is it from a different place, it was made by someone who's from that other world, right? Oftentimes the fabrics are embellished with beads or sequins. Uh, typically the fabrics are very rich, silks, velvets, things that look sumptuous and decadent. And, you know, I typically think of Bohemian as having lots of different patterns that seamlessly work together, even though they look like they came from totally different lands, mm -hmm. as well as those rich jewel tone colors. Mm. So deep purples, magentas, burgundies, emeralds, all of those things come to mind when I am designing boho. I love that. So if I knew that boho was my aesthetic or what I wanted it to be, but I didn't know how to effectively mismatch, but match different patterns that must, I feel like that's a whole art in itself because you have this collection of different you know, patterns and rugs that seemingly, like you said, don't match, but they actually look really good together. So how do you execute that? Yes, that is the trick because with boho, it can look very scattered, almost too eclectic, almost too flattered object. Yeah. Like, are we in a curiosity shop or is this someone's well-curated home? Mm -hmm. So I have a rule of thumb for that mm -hmm. whenever I'm mixing patterns. So you want to start with a core color palette. Okay. So I take an inspiration piece, like a piece of art or like that very vibrant rug you were talking about mm -hmm. that has three colors or more. Mm -hmm. And then you can pull colors from that for all the patterns. So all the patterns coordinate with that rug, but here's the trick. All the patterns must be a different scale. So they can't all be tiny patterns, right? They can't all be large patterns and you measure a pattern from its repeat. So from the start of the pattern to where it repeats again is the size of the pattern. Okay. So we have small polka dots, right? We have little trellis patterns. We have mm -hmm. large damask patterns. We have even larger floral patterns, right? So as long as they all coordinate with that one inspiration piece, and as long as each pattern that you've chosen, whether it's the throw pillow, the rug, the drapes, the throw blanket are of a different scale, it will seamlessly work together. It's when you have a whole wow. bunch of tiny patterns that it's like, what's going on that don't relate to anything that shares the color palette, or when you have a lot of huge patterns, right? That can feel so overwhelming. And totally, that's, that's when it starts to look like you didn't know what you were doing. You're blowing my mind right now. So you use that one base pattern as the color anchor, and then you can have another pattern as long as the color aligns with whatever the rug or the art, you know, whatever your anchor pattern is. And that's so interesting about the scale, because I feel like a lot of smaller patterns actually are just going to be busy and overwhelming. Um, but a larger pattern and a smaller or large scale, and then a small scale mixing together. See, I don't know any of this stuff. That's awesome. Well, you do. That, you know, I just still design down to rules. Mm -hmm. There are rules I follow every day. You know, I watched Tom Felicia design and I was like, how can I turn this into something that I can do that I can replicate? And it's all rules, mm -hmm. you know, look through design magazines. You're not going to see a room with a ton of tiny patterns, mm -hmm. but each pattern is going to relate back to what I call that inspiration piece, whether right. it is that big piece of art above the sofa or that magnificent rug on the floor. It's got the multicolors from which we derive the colors for the patterns. And then you can go nuts. You can truly pick as many patterns as you want. And mm -hmm. in the bow Boho style, I think you have to have at least three patterns in the room or else you're mm. not really embracing the nature of the style. I also think something interesting with boho and I, and 
also definitely Jungleo and something I've been playing around with myself is thinking that you can only have one bright color in a room because then it's going to be too overwhelming. But I actually think with the boho, you actually need a couple of, of bright colors almost combating each other because it actually mellows everybody out. Mm. Does that make sense to you? I think that's an interesting philosophy. I've never thought of it that way. And it totally makes sense. I always think that you need three colors, right? Three so col- okay. you have a base of neutrals, mm-hmm. so whether it's grays, beiges, you know, off whites or grayages, mm-hmm. right? So you start with the foundation of neutrals and then you overlay color. Mm-hmm. But the way that you work with color well is, in my opinion, you only pick three colors from that inspiration piece, mm-hmm. right? So if it's the magenta, the navy, and the yellow ochre, all of those are perfect boho colors, by the way. Right. So you're pulling those from the inspiration piece and you're sprinkling them around the room, but using them in different doses. So I'd mm-hmm. use 60% magenta. of my accents and accessories and colorful items would be navy. And I do 10% pops of that ochre. Now, if you wanted to go more colorful, if you want to push it in a style like boho, that would make sense. That 10% I was referring to Mm -hmm. could be any color found in the inspiration piece. So you can go a little bit wild, but only in a small dose because we want at the end of the day, it to feel sophisticated. Yeah. And sometimes boho because there's so many different ideas that pieces are coming from so many different sources, so many different countries. Sometimes it can feel all over the place. Mm -hmm. So when you're shopping, you really need to have an editing eye and stick to rules with a style like boho with an eclectic style, because otherwise it's going to look just like a big mishmash. Yeah. You have a personality test on your website that I took because I, I, similar to my plant parent personality, but it's your design. So I took it and I'm in a, I got eclectic. Oh yeah. You got to watch out. I got to watch out who like boho and eclectic need to work with a professional Yeah, because it can get all over the place so fast. Mm -hmm. Uh, with other styles that we'll talk about, I think you can really put your own guardrails on, Mm -hmm. but with eclectic, the more fun you have in a sophisticated, um, boundaried way, right. The more wow your space will have. People will come in and they'll say, oh my gosh, this is so you. This could not be anyone else, but right. you. Totally. But it can go wrong quickly. <laughs> <laughs> 